yeah, so I'm glad that you are here for class today. If you want to, you are welcome to have a small set of hand weights nearby. If you don't have them and don't want to use them in class today, you don't have to, but we are going to focus on in class with this idea of um, movement and strength. We're going to be building strength and we're going to be working on um, kind of this idea of discipline, staying with it. All right. So uh, we are going to begin. Uh, I think we're, I, I'm actually just, I'm starting to change my idea um, just barely here. So we're going to go ahead and start this morning standing. We were going to start on hands and knees, but I've, I've had a, a slight little change of, of my mind here. Um, so we're going to start standing, and you can begin in just any standing position that feels comfortable for you. So I typically like my feet just a tiny bit wider than my hips. I'm not sure if it's because I have long limbs, long legs, or, you know, wider in the hips, but it just feels good to me to stand a little wider. It helps me with my balance. Some people enjoy standing with the toes, big toes, kind of touching. Um, that engages inner thighs a little bit. You can kind of try both positions out. Uh, but I want you to be in this firm mountain pose. And then we are going to just take a few deep breaths and close down the eyes. And we're going to start our practice today with an intention that I'd like to set as, as a whole or for our entire group. That being said, if it doesn't resonate with you, or if I decide, you know, if I just, because I'm leading us in this idea to set our intention, if you don't, if you're like, yeah, that doesn't really do it for me today, no worries. But I want us to take a moment here just to take a few deep calming breaths. So slowing down, taking in some deep breaths in, some deep breaths out. And the intention that I would love to set is, may I stay committed? Or can I stay committed? It could be a question. <laughs> Hopefully the answer is yes. Or allow me to stay committed. Or it could even be a simple word such as commit. But the idea behind this intention is that if on your mat today, something gets a little challenging, a little boring, a little hard mentally or physically, can you stay committed? Will you stay committed? May I stay committed? So right here in Mountain Pose, this pose, Tadasana, represents strength, commitment a force to be reckoned with. No one pushes over a mountain, maybe an earthquake, maybe a volcano. <laughs> so let's go ahead and step with the feet pretty wide. And we're gonna get into just some stretches here with the toes pointing out. And we're just gonna side to side begin a gentle, pretty upright lunge. So it's not as low or as deep as a skandasana. It's really just a good little warming up for the quadriceps, the inner thighs, maybe even the low back. If you feel flexible enough or warm enough and you do want to begin coming down a little further, you can, but make sure that you're not just bending forward at the waist. Make sure that you're still keeping your chest pretty upright. I'm a little stiff, so I'm going to kind of take it a little easy here, but I am going to stay committed and then the next time that you, well, let's just go ahead and do one more time each side, and then we're going to just roll up. And if staying wide doesn't feel great, you want to crawl your feet in a bit, you can, but we're going to bring the arms out here. We're just going to start some little gentle circles, little teeny tiny circles. 
and just play around with it. Do about, oh, 10 or 20, kind of count them out in your head if you want to in one direction, and then circle in the opposite direction, maybe 10 or 20, 15, or just till you get tired of it. But again, stay committed. We won't do a lot of these. We are gonna do some different uh, yoga type drills in class today, but we're going to keep them relatively basic. And I want you to think about, again, if you have a small set of hand weights or a couple soup cans, you're welcome to grab them. But our own body weight will be plenty. So as you begin staying with it, notice the mind chatter. I know that my mind is saying, and I'm the one here, I know what's coming, right? And you don't even know what's coming. But my own mind is saying, okay, Amy, watch that timer. How much longer are we gonna do this? <laughs> so if you notice that, just come back to that collective thought of, I am going to stay committed. I'm going to commit. And then we're going to give it five, four, three, two, one seconds, relax. Whew. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so then this feels natural, right? We're going to bend the knees and hold on maybe to opposite elbows or forearms and then just kind of hang. And if it feels good to sway, you can. But really just let the weight of your body pull you into this forward fold. I would recommend the knees to be pretty soft. We don't want straight, 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 straight legs here. And we're stretching the back, relaxing the arms. And then reaching down for the ground, let's go ahead and take our toes and point them out towards the long edge of our mat. So we're in a wide leg forward fold. And then we're gonna walk our hands forward keep the heels down. So this is kind of like a uber, uber wide downward facing dog. And then we're gonna walk our hands underneath us, point the fingers the other way and walk as far under as we can. And then again, switch. Walk the hands forward, keep the heels and the weight back. And then walk the hands underneath us. Again, keep the weight in the heels back. And once more again, forward, keep the weight in the heels back. And then walk the hands underneath, still keeping the weight in the heels back. Okay, so we're going to go ahead here and come back up, hands above the knees, Press to roll yourself up. Feeling energetic, you can hop your feet in. Otherwise, step the feet in. Okay, so we're going to get into some chair flows here. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and grab a set of light hand weights. I meant to have them with me, just because I want to give it a try. If you don't have any, again, it's not a problem at all, but we're gonna start with our arms out and we're going to sit into chair pose. And then as we stand up, we're going to bend at the elbows and tap our weights or tap our fingers to our shoulders, okay? So again, we'll sit into chair, wrists are, and elbows are lined up with shoulders. We'll stand and we'll tap our weights to our shoulders. Again, it works just fine if you decide that you want to only use fingers. Our arms hanging out there in the middle of space provide plenty of resistance. Now I've got a nice smooth easy pace that I'm going here. We are going to do this two times. So this first time through we're going to stay relatively slow with it. If you are choosing to do something with weights in your hands, then I would recommend to watch anything like sharp pain, of course. If it's a dull ache and it's just the muscle burning, be mindful of if you cringe up the neck to protect. Five more seconds. Stay committed. And then we'll relax our arms down. 
kind of roll out the shoulders, maybe shake out the legs a little bit. Okay, so before we move to the second set, we're going to just do another variation of chair, but we're gonna let our arms hang down to the sides. If we have weights, again, we're just holding them. And again, we're going to sit down like we're going into a chair. Our chest stays lifted, and we'll just stand back up. So we're giving those arms a little bit of a break, but we're still staying in chair. When we look down, we wanna be able to see our toes. So in other words, we don't want to let the knees go far forward past the toes. And we want to keep the chest lifted. There's no need to, you guys have heard me say this before, no need to J-Lo the booty out, right? Okay, so we still want a, the bottom going back, but not sticking out. We can just let the tailbone drop naturally. So again, as we're thinking about our yoga practice, if we can make it through challenging moves that require quite a bit of physicality, we get a little stronger in the mind, right? Which then we hope carries on off of our mat. Five more seconds. And relax. Ooh, okay, again, shake that out a little bit. Okay, all we're going to do is we're going to repeat those. Now I'm kind of feeling, I think it might be because it's gray and cloudy outside, but I'm feeling this need to pick it up a little bit. So when I go back to this first variation of chair squat, personally, I'm going to go a little faster. You might enjoy that same, just steady, easy feel. And if you do, that's fine. If you wanna pick it up a little quicker, you're welcome to. So again, as we sit back into chair, we'll work for the arms straight out sitting into that chair, and when we stand up, we tap. We sit, we tap. And again, you can go any pace you want. The only thing that we're looking at today is staying committed. I mean, you've signed on, you've gotten your mat out, you've gotten your mindset to do class today. Maybe it's exactly what you hoped for, Maybe it's the opposite of what you were looking for. But isn't that how we need to show up for our life? We might have a plan when we go to the party or the meeting or the church or the whatever we go to. We might have a plan of how it's going to go and it might go the complete opposite way. Does that mean we quit? Does that mean we leave? Maybe, maybe not. Five, four, three, two, one, and rest. Ah, no better words were spoken than rest. <laughs> I'm not sure if that is more on my arms or my legs. I haven't quite decided yet. <laughs> okay, so one more time through the second one, which is just going to be a chair squat. So again, your arms will just be to your side, your chest will stay lifted. And as you begin, you're welcome to stay at the same pace that I'm going to take which is going to be slightly faster, but you do you. Watch your breath, make sure that you're not holding it. Make sure that you are staying right on track with breathing in and breathing out. If your mind starts into a negative thought of, oh, this is so hard. How about say instead, I'm doing this. I'm here, I'm strong. Look at me. Pat yourself on the back. Squeeze your booty when you stand up. Five, four, three, two, one, and whew. <laughs> okay, we're good. If you have a set of weights, you're going to set them down for a moment, just kind of off to the side or handy. And I'm going to take just a few little easy kindergarten twirls or steps, just kind of making sure that if my heart rate's up, I didn't get it too high because in a moment we're going to come right back down to the ground. So we kind of want to make sure that we feel loose 
and that we don't feel too uh, elevated, okay? So let's come to the top of our mat. We're gonna move through some sun salutations, but we're going to, they're gonna be slightly different than maybe what we're used to um, in a traditional sense, okay? So let's breathe in everybody to reach up. We're gonna sit back into that chair as we bring our hands down the center line. And let's interlace our fingers and stand back up tall. And then we're going to forward fold. Inhale to lengthen the spine, lift halfway up. Exhale to lower back down, plant both hands and step back into downward facing dog. And don't mind me as I almost step on my dog's sweet face who's decided to lay on my mat today. <laughs> Some of you have got your furries at home too. Well, she's moving, she's such a good girl. So then we're going to come forward to plank. Knees are going to come down. Now you can work here to hold kneeling plank, or if you'd like to step your hands out a little bit wider, you can have an opportunity for three kneeling push-ups, not chaturanga, but actually push-up. So you can go three, two, one on your push-ups, or you can just work to hold a nice strong plank. And then we're going to step back into downward facing dog. Stretch and down dog. And then gaze towards your thumbs and bring your feet to meet your hands. Inhale, lengthen the spine. Exhale, lower back down. And then inhale all the way up, nice and tall. Look up, stretch up, reach up, and bring the hands down. All right, here we go, let's go again. So inhale, we're gonna sink into chair. Our body's nice and warm now. Interlace the fingers and stand back tall. Forward fold. Lengthen the spine. Lower, plant the hands. Again, step back to downward dog. Shifting forward. Choosing if you would like to work on full plank or kneeling plank, stepping the hands out a little bit wider, and taking again three push ups. Those of you that have a strong push up already in your physical body, you're welcome to take full push ups, but we'll go through this twice more. We'll come back to downward dog after your three push ups or your strength in plank. Stretch those chest muscles, the pecs. And then bring the feet and hands together at the top of the mat, forward fold. Lengthen the spine, lift halfway up. Lower back down. And then lift all the way, big stretch, big reach. And exhale. All right, here we go. Inhale, reach and stretch. Exhale into chair. Interlace. Stretch up, forward fold it, lengthen the spine, lower back down again, planting your hands as you step back into your downward facing dog. Working in plank, if you're choosing push ups, widen the hands a little bit and take three. Back into downward facing dog. Lovely. Stay committed, guys. We're doing it once more. So as we come to the top of our mat, we'll take a breath in. Ardha Uttanasana. Take a breath out, lower down. And then sweeping breath, inhale, big and strong body. Exhale down the center line. Last time through, one more time of this. Inhale, chair pose. Interlace and stretch up, fold it in. Lengthen that spine, lower back down, plant the hands, downward dog, holding your plank or widening the hands a little bit and taking those push-ups. Strong in the body, strong in the mind. 
Downward facing dog. Top of your mat. Hands under the knees, look up, lengthen, lower back down, and then inhale tall. Breathe and stretch. And then as we exhale, bring the hands to heart center. Step into that Tadasana that feels good for you. If it doesn't make you dizzy, I might recommend to close down the eyes for a moment. Stay connected to the self. Stay connected to the breath. Enjoy a small lunar pause here. It's kind of like in the middle of a busy day or, or how about this, in a traffic jam. You know, you just, you get tense and you get irritated and frustrated, but what would it feel like if you just relaxed? What would it feel like if you just turned up the radio, <laughs> breathed your way through it, just stayed focused on what you can control, which happens to be your breath or the radio station. Relax the arms down, open the eyes. Okay, so we're going to do one more standing flow and you can choose again to use your weights if you would like, or you can choose to skip out on the weights. It's your choice. So I'm actually going to, I think I'll use the weights. I'm trying to decide. I've got a little shoulder issue that is creeping back up. And so I'm thinking, am I strengthening it or am I aggravating it? So I personally might drop the weights, but we'll see how it feels as I continue to move. So we're going to be in warrior two. You can pick whichever side you want to go ahead and start with and step the body into warrior two, but bring your weights or your hands kind of at your hips. So just get nice and strong first into your Virabhadrasana two. Think about equal pressure in both feet, right? So we're gonna bring our arms like a cactus upside down. So an upside down cactus. You can uh, either point the weights straight down or you can point the weights or the hands back. And then we're going to take an upward rotation and then we're gonna push a downward rotation. Yeah, and we're just going to move through that up and down. Breathing naturally. The tendency as our shoulders get tired or maybe our shoulders aren't super strong yet is to drop the elbows. If you can keep those elbows at shoulder height, you're going to work the shoulder a little differently. Now, if you have a weight that happens to be heavier than a three pound weight or a five pound weight, I would not do this. Definitely no heavier than five pounds. Five more seconds with it, strong in warrior, staying committed. And then bring the hands to the hips again to relax the hands. But can you just dive a little deeper in your warrior? We're going to lift the heel, drop the heel. Lift the heel, drop the heel. Lift and drop. Breathing in, breathing out. Breathing in. And then working here on the last five seconds, if able to hold the heel up. Stay committed. And relax. Take the toes to the long edge of your mat or long direction. Take a gentle forward fold and just let go in any way that you desire. So whether it's holding opposite elbows, whether it's reaching for the toes, whether it's pressing into a variation A, B, or C, I want you to just melt, relax. Don't fight it. What feels good here to you?
and then we're simply going to keep it very nice and basic. We're gonna come back into our second side for warrior. So as you come with your hands at the waist, with your weights, if you're using them, you'll just roll the body up and switch out your foot position. Again, just kind of let your arms rest at the hips until you get nice and strong. Because we now know we're going to be in this warrior for a while. I tend to cheat a little bit in warrior. I get tired and I, and I look down and I'm like, oh yeah, I'm really just standing with wide legs. So I know that my body is going to maybe resist a bit, but my mind is stronger than my body. So I'm going to encourage myself to stay committed in my warrior, nice and deep and low. So again, we're gonna start with upside down cactus arms and we're going to open back up and then press it back down. Stay the same pace that we did. If you don't have weights, you're kind of imagining that you do, then you've got a little uh, squeeze in the fists, not a hard squeeze. If you happen to have small weights in your hand, do just the opposite. Make sure you're not squeezing the weights too hard. And I bet you a dollar you're saying, oh, this is killing me, or how much longer, or this is hard. Go somewhere else, right? Go to your favorite TV show. <laughs> Go to a pleasant thought. Go to the breath. Make sure your head is turned in a direction that feels good. Five, four, three, two, one, stay in warrior. If you're able, bring your hands to your hips, relax the arms, challenge the mind in the body a bit here by lifting the heel, dropping the heel, lifting the heel, dropping, lifting, dropping, breathing, not holding the breath. Five, four, three, to hold it up if you can, hold it, hold it. It's just a small hold, a little snippet. Heel down, relax, and again, let it just go in a wide leg forward fold. I don't even care if this looks or anything like what a quote unquote yoga pose should look like. Just let this forward fold feel relaxed and soft for you. When you feel ready, we're just gonna come back into, to downward dog. If you'd rather stay in forward fold for a bit, you can, because we're gonna hold downward dog for a bit as well, and just kind of stretch and feel loose. And dependent upon how long you want to stay energized, stay here, otherwise, we're taking child's pose. Downward dog might feel exactly what the doctor ordered for you today, or child's pose might, or maybe just virasana. Whatever posture you're choosing to just kind of calm and reset, I want you to do that. I want you to close the eyes, please. I'd love for you to take some deep breaths. I am committed. May I stay committed to myself, to my beliefs. May I stay committed to being open to others' beliefs. Does anyone remember that niyama? That's coming from our studies of the yamas and the niyamas, satya, truthfulness. Staying committed, staying dedicated. Also, one of our niyamas. And then, wherever you happen to be, I'd like for you 
let's, let's for us all to come down onto our belly. Let's take a moment in Sphinx pose. So that's gonna simply just be shoulders under, or excuse me, shoulders over elbows, pressing with the forearms and pulling the chest or the heart forward. Now you wanna be mindful of the low back as to not be compressing it too much. If you have a nice natural curve in the low back, you can feel it. If you're fighting that or if it's too much, go ahead and slide the elbows slightly away from under the shoulders or even a little bit wider. As long as you're feeling a nice stretch in the belly, a nice opening in the back, upper back, that's where we're gonna be in Sphinx for a moment. And then we're going to do some uh, back extensions, kind of a variation of locust pose. And again, you're welcome to use weights or not, but we're going to drop back down and bring the arms out kind of again, like a cactus shape out to our sides. And then as we lift our chest and lift our torso, we're going to also lift those arms, lift and lower. Now for today, I'm going to let you decide if you would like to incorporate the low body. I personally am going to just focus on the upper body and here's why. When I start to lift my legs in this particular locust flow, I start to compress and squeeze too much in my low back. Part of that is a strength issue. My low back is not very strong, I'm working on it. And part of that is the fact that I've got long levers, AKA long arms and legs. But you can decide what feels better for you. This is a hard one to stay committed to folks because it's a little challenging to breathe, right? So stay with it for five, four, three, two, one. Take a little pillow for your head with your hands Bend the knees and windshield wiper heels back and forth. Deep breaths. So we're going to take another strengthener here for the back. And I would recommend not using weights on this particular one, but you do you going to reach our arms out long and we're going to allow the head to stay neutral in other words just long spine long neck so we don't want to look up to crunch the neck we just want to keep it nice and long and neutral we're going to lift opposite arm opposite leg and lower down lift opposite arm opposite leg and lower down and as we do this everyone back and forth the idea is not to see how high you can reach. The idea is to coordinate the back muscles with the hamstrings, glutes, and also the upper back with the shoulder and the lats. So watch the hips. You should feel your hip points stay neutral and on your mat at all times. In other words, we don't want to be rocking from side to side just to see how high we can lift. Again, watch compression feeling in the low back. Five, four, three, two, one, and bend the elbows, make a pillow, turn your head, or just relax. Wiggle out if you want to to loosen up around that pelvis area. And then as we come, as you're ready into downward dog, hopefully it never felt so sweet. This downward dog now, after that work into our back, is such a lovely reset of the spine. Once you get settled in down dog, can you shorten it maybe just a little bit so that you can hold it? So rather than pedal it out or move it out, can you just hold your downward dog? Watch for elbows locking, watch for knees locking. That won't really serve us very well. That'll just cause 
hyperextension perhaps. Picture those shoulder blades and pull them down towards the low back. Press with your hands rather than dump or sink. Find a deep, steady, smooth breath. Take your fingers if you're able and spread them nice and wide and really press. You've got 10 fingers, let's use them all. Press with all of them. There might be a little more pressure in between the thumb and the first finger. That's okay, that's a nice little grounding point. Deep breath in through your nose, exhale out of the mouth, and then let's come to the knees, nice and easy. And then we're going to come all the way down to a seat. Okay. Ooh. So we're gonna work a little bit more of the back side of the body. And then we're gonna finish up our time today with some great stretches. So we're gonna come down onto the backs and we're going to take our legs first, just give them a little hug into the chest. And then we're gonna reach the legs up towards our ceiling or sky. We're gonna point the toes to the ceiling and then pull the toes back to our face. If you have to hold behind your legs, that's fine. Otherwise, just allow your arms to rest down by your sides or on your belly. Point and flex, point and flex. Then we're gonna bend the knees, place the feet on the floor. And let's take our right ankle, please, and cross it over the left knee or thigh area. And then we're going to imagine that someone is pressing our right knee away from us. So if you want to, take your own hand and press it there a little bit. And then place your hand back down on the ground. Slide your left foot in closer to your bottom. And then press into the foot and lift. So we're coming into single footed bridge. Now we're going to stay right here first for this stretch. If it feels safe and okay for you, we're going to take that right leg again back up to the ceiling and we're going to drop the back and lift. Drop the back and lift. Drop the hips and lift. If you'd rather just stay and hold, with that leg stretching out to the side. In figure four stretch, you can. Otherwise, we just have a few more of these drops and lifts. You should not feel compression or strain in the low back here, guys. It really should just be coming from the glutes, the hips, the hamstrings. Three, two, one, and slowly rest. Take your feet about mat width apart or so and just let the knees touch. Take in a few deep breaths. How are we doing? Stay committed. Stay committed. We're almost here, guys. Let's switch it up. So we'll bring in our right heel pretty close to our bottom. We'll cross our left ankle over our right knee we might just guide it open just a little with our hand or just imagine that someone is helping us. But we don't want to stay pressing on that. We wanna use our muscular action to do so. So then as we drop our hand back down, we'll lift the hips. This is work in and of itself, just to lift and hold. Great place to stay. If you'd like to, you can take that left leg up towards the ceiling or sky and drop and lift. Drop and lift. <laughs> Drop and lift. Ooh, it's easy to get a cramp, I know. So if you feel that sensation coming on, that's obviously something that you don't want to have happen. So back off when you need to. Just about five more seconds. 
and slowly, slowly with control, lower down. Bring your feet gently apart and gently allow the knees to touch. And then as we open up the knees, let's just take a nice wide windshield wiper here. I love this posture, this movement, because it, for me, it hits a lot of spots in my body. It hits my low back, it hits my hips, it hits the outer thigh. It's just a lovely motion, again, for me. For you, you might need the feet in a little closer, but when you drop your feet over towards the right side of your body, go ahead and let the knees stay there and rest. If this is plenty of stretch on your right side body, then go ahead and just let the heaviness of your legs pull you down. If you'd like to, you can take your outside leg, which is your left leg, and just nestle it up on the outer edge of the right thigh, knee area, and that provides your own body weight for a bit more of a stretch. It really, your back is very arched in this particular stretch. Arms are just either at the chest or out to the side. You can adjust by pulling the knees closer into the body. That might ease up any discomfort that you might be feeling perhaps in the knee. Big deep breaths. And then if you have the leg crossed, gently uncross. And then we're gonna, again, just move it side to side. Windshield wiper that out. And then when you drop to the left, again, we're just gonna kind of hold. If the knees, again, staying wide or apart is too much, go ahead and bring them more on top of each other and play around with this a bit. Maybe take your left ankle and pull it up to the outer edge of the thigh. Maybe draw the knees in or out. These twists are meant to nourish. They should never hurt. They should never feel like you're overdoing it. They should feel like a relief, like a let go. And then again, as you take your time to come back off, I'd like to take what I call temper tantrum pose. <laughs> so we're gonna bring the legs up, arms up, and we're gonna wiggle them all out. It's just, you, you wonder why kids do this. I mean, there's something about, I mean, you guys can scream and holler if you want to. I won't, because that will not feel good on your ears. <laughs> but I mean, it's just something about like, ugh, I'm getting it all out, right? And then I'm gonna just plop, let everything just rest. Whew. And let's take happy baby. So the knees will bend. We'll reach for either the outer edges of our feet if that's feasible for us, or maybe we'll just kind of hug behind the knees. And we can rock, we can just stay firm. It's kind of funny when you think about it. If we've got a temper tantrum pose and a happy baby pose, kids really know what they're doing, right? <laughs> Deep breaths in and out. And then I'd love for us to roll to one side to press back up to a seat. A little odd sometimes once we're laying back we think oh yay we're finished almost we're going to take forward fold here seated forward bend if you've got a strap or a towel or something and this is a good spot to kind of put it around the feet you're more than welcome to I love to keep the feet active and that 
just keeps our musculature system safe in line with our jo joints. So when we're sitting tall, we want to think about where the hip crease is as opposed to the waist. Sometimes I even remind myself by bringing my fingers and pressing them into the hip crease as a reminder so that when I fold forward, I'm folding from the correct position. As opposed to when I bend from my waist just to reach. And then wherever the arms fall is perfectly acceptable. Might help to keep your hands at the hip crease. Right, maybe that feels kind of like a good reminder to just stay engaged. Some people enjoy pressing the fingertips back behind the low back to kind of give some relief to support the spine. And then others with bigger range of motion might be reaching for the feet. Once you're to the place where you think you can hold, feel free to relax the head. It's okay if the head relaxes. And everyone is going to be at a different pace, but I'm going to take 10 breath cycles. And I would love for you to do the same. So breath in, breath out is considered one. Quiet the mind, quiet the body. Count your breaths. They don't need to be super long breaths. You should be probably at around breath five or six. Stay committed. And again, dependent upon where you happen to be in your breath cycle, if you're finished, you're rolling up. If you're still staying with it, you're staying committed. Once you have finished your 10 breaths in Uttanasana, or I'm sorry, this is not Uttanasana, this is Paschimottanasana, we're going to roll back again to our backs and hug the knees into the chest. And not rushing you at all if you're still in forward fold, but once those knees into your chest, it might feel good on the spine to take a little gentle rock side to side, or maybe it feels good for you just to hug. And then today I have set aside five full minutes of Shavasana. I really hope that you can commit to five minutes of stillness, everyone. That five minutes of stillness for some of us might be harder than five minutes of squats or five minutes of back extensions. But the quiet is a part of the practice as well. So once you feel ready, to come into your quiet space, whether it is seated, whether it is lying on your back with legs extended or in restorative rest with knees bent. I would love to ask one more time for your commitment to yourself and to this practice to be still. I'll give us about 30 more seconds or so to get settled if you're not already there before I'll begin our time. And I too am going to stay quiet. So if you're worried that something happened with your connection, <laughs> it didn't. Just enjoy the quiet, enjoy the stillness, stay committed, and I'll bring you back in just a bit.
if your time happens to be up in terms of where you need to be or what you have going next, then you can begin taking wiggles of the toes and fingers until you're ready to sit. If you have more time to stay in your relaxed posture, in your resting position, then I hope you can do that. If you are finishing up class with me today, once you are in a comfortable seat again, just closing down the eyes. Let's bring the hands right to the heart center in prayer position. Take the chin and just gently tuck it as if bowing to the self or honoring the self. Thank you for staying committed. Thank you for committing to yourself and to this practice, to me, to one another, and to anything else that you are choosing to commit your energies to. I hope that today you learned that being strong on your mat correlates to being strong off of your mat. Looking forward to the next time that we meet. I hope that you do have a beautiful rest of your day. Let's finish with three breaths in everyone. Arms out to your sides. Take an inhale as we lift for the mind. And for the body. And the fullest, deepest breath for the spirit. Sealing those palms together again once more, bringing them down the center line. Again, thank you all for being here today. It's been a pleasure. Namaste.